Good morning. Welcome to this, the final briefing, uh, news briefing from the 250th American Chemical Society National Meeting and Exposition in Boston. I'm Doug Dollimore, and we're joined this morning by Jin Bai from the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Pierce, Florida, and he is figuring out simple ways to give customers what they really want in the grocery stores, and that's a flavorful store-bought tomato. And I'm really intrigued by this because I grew up uh, eating tomatoes off the vine, and uh, over the years I've noticed they're not as uh, tasty as before. So can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing, sir? Yeah. Um, yeah, we... Uh, our group uh, not this... Uh, Problem for a long time with tomato uh, tastes uh, like uh, cardboard. Then uh, start to research how to save the flavor. Then, um, of course, the for the marketer, for the grower, they need to make money, and for them, most important thing is to keep the uh, fruit. It's uh, no bruise, not decayed. Uh, have a uniform size, have a red color, then flower say the way behind. Therefore, we will try to fit our um, procedure inside the, the, their current system without changing their system. Otherwise, they will not accept. What we did is just uh, before uh, we, we try to alleviate the, the volatile by uh, how is slightly it's different maturity with current uh, uh, commercial system. Another one is uh, before the the uh, cold storage, we do a heat treatment with hot water for only five minutes, or use the uh, fumigation for one night overnight uh, with some uh, chemicals and then your tomato going through the commercial system, then still save a better flavor. It what we did, and in the last two years, we uh, confirmed this result, and uh, we get uh, uh, our uh, sensory panel recognize this uh, research was significant different from current uh, commercial system. Do we have any questions uh, from the floor out here? Kath? It's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry magazine. Why does the heat treatment, um, what does it do to actually produce these extra flavor compounds? Yeah, uh, for the uh, mechanism side, we are uh, not directly had uh, the we we had uh, some of research is about uh, the called uh, tomato the uh, logs pathway it's a mechanism to cut the, the format volatiles these uh, critical enzymes use this uh, heat treatment you can upregulate the enzyme activity and. Uh, also, another, the big profile, it's the heat treatment for a short moment. For us, it's 52 degrees C for five minutes. You induce the heat protein called. This protein can uh, the, the, uh, induce the tolerance to uh, decay. Same time, also upregulate volatile production-related enzymes. What's, what are the main new volatiles or the new flavor compounds that are appearing when you subject them to that treatment? Yeah. Uh, for tomato, uh, really, you're not really uh, all for the current uh, bad influence from immature harvest or uh, the chili injury, basically, it doesn't cure all for volatile, but it downregulated all for them. For our treatment, here we use heat or use methyl It's not uh, 
overall upregulated the key volatiles about 10 or 20, 10 to 20 volatiles is upregulated by these treatments. Ben? Ben Valsler, Chemistry World. Uh, I'm wondering what the difference is between the two different treatments. Do you see a different set of compounds from the fumigation compared to the heat treatment? And which one, if you had to pick one, would you like to see uh, tomato growers doing right away? Uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, it's, for my answer, is very simple. Because I did not do a side-by-side -side experiment, I cannot directly compare two of them. But they did go in, went through a different mechanism. For heat treatment, mostly it's uh, down-regulated, uh, mostly up-regulated the uh, defense system and the volatile, the related uh, enzymes. But for methyl jasmonate, it uh, has an uh, interaction with the ethylene pathway. They have a, this one is mostly through the ripening, changes the ripening procedure, therefore, influence volatile. They have a different mechanism. We don't have a direct compare two of them. In the future, we can do that, maybe. Yes. Uh, Matt Gunther, Chemistry World. This may be a rather philosophical question, but how easy as a scientist is it to quantify taste? Um, and whether certain, certain people, it's a very subjective concept, some people will think that some things taste better than others. So how, how easy is it to quantify taste as a scientist? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's true. It's, uh, we, we, we do a lot of panel tests. We do consumer panel and uh, uh, trained panel. We often say, do you taste what I taste? Do you smell what I smell? Some people smell good, some people, no, I don't like it. It's uh, here, which is a number, it's uh, everything. I have, I usually, I use, uh, at least I have 50 panels. Or even, I have multiple times over hundreds of panels. If 90% of people like it, I just think it's uh, people like it. If, uh, you know, if, uh, maybe you have 20% people like it, I think it's the uh, people don't really like it. Yeah, it's a number system. It's not, uh, not really the human's brain change there. I believe we have an online question. Yeah, Carmen Drawl, writing for Forbes.com, is asking a question. The tomato industry is resistant to change, she says. As you know, new breeds, such as the Garden Gem, haven't been taken up by growers. When you're talking millions of tons of tomatoes, even hot water is expensive. How do you plan to convince people to pick up the tab? Yeah, uh, it's correct. It's, uh, for a breeder, the, 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 the they did the effort. Some of the, the new, uh, see, new uh, cultivar really have good flowers, uh, but uh, the industry just uh, because of other issue. For example, you have uh, how about your your productivity? How about your resistance to decay? All for other things always run first. Your flowers uh, last in last. But we did have a, uh, the, um, we, last year we did one experiment. It's uh, not one last year. We continued a seven years project, 2003 to 2010, compared to 33 cultivars lines in Florida. Uh, and every year we do three seasons, just to compare the all for volatiles to see what cultivar is better. But the question is very good. Uh, the cultivar steer, if we want to line up, we want to line up is uh, number one. But uh, why we still need other things, just alternative. If the industry, you have a good f the cultivar, but the industry not, not adapted. Therefore, we have this uh, heat treatment or method salicylate treatment help. It's just uh, one alternative for me. 
So, so she, I think she, she was wanting to know, if, even if you're using lots of water, that could be a big cost. So how, how do you think that companies will uh, convince people that uh, these tomatoes are actually worth that extra cost? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I, I think it's correct. It's a, it's a cost. The temperature you raise to 52 degrees, a lot of energy. And for, for a company, if they are uh, willing to uh, adopt this technology, it's still a question. But uh, practically, we already had uh, many in that internationally, not for tomato, adopt this similar uh, procedure. For example, mango in Mexico, when before the export to the United States, you must use hard water treated. Otherwise, the United States is not accept you. It's a similar situation I can use to a tomato, if you think that way. Of course, the industry will cal calculate if, if you lose, lose more or, or more. Uh, Dr. Jin, are, are you a tomato lover? Um, I'm just wondering what got you interested in this research. Yes, I love tomatoes, but uh, these days, if I Close my eyes, you give me a tomato, I eat it, I don't know if I'm eating tomato or not. Because you really know the typical uh, tomato or volatile. Basically, the fruit and vegetable, only for sugar acid, always important. But only sugar acid, you don't know it's melon or it's a pear or apple. Because what makes it different is volatile. But volatile is ignored by the current, the production and the marketing system. It's why we try to, from different sides, to, to contribute to and solve the problem. In the United States, basically, we are potato, tomato, and lettuce. The most important uh, the vegetables for people get uh, the, the nutritionally our needs. And if we, we said, oh, if you eat more vegetable, it's good for your health. But you not, it tastes less, and people don't want to eat. If, if you have a good taste, therefore people eat that, better for your health. Yeah. Christine? I'm sorry, Jonathan. Thanks. Hi, Jonathan Webb, BBC News. Um, can you just quickly go through the, the key results of the different tests that you do? I get that you tested for particular compounds, but it sounds like you also got people in to taste them. Uh, how big was the difference you saw, and, and sort of what were the key results in both tests? Yeah. Uh, we see most important is the people, because people will end up with people who eat the tomato. But the, because the... It's a quite a sub subjective. People, every people are different. Therefore, we are always try to use the machine to mimic people, find a correlation between sensory panel and the instrument result. If we find some strong connection, therefore, we only measure compounds with people we know. Therefore, it's a, for, for the objective more use the, the the equipment for us. But for research, usually we always use both of them. Hopefully, in the industry, because you don't have everybody, have the sensory crew. Therefore, for the industry, if we find a very strong correlation, the industry only need to buy equipment. Then you can know that. And did you taste the difference? Uh, I'm not a super test tester. <laughs> You know, some super tester is so sensitive to, to a little bit of stuff. I am an average tester. Most of people we are, but a super tester can tell you very, very detailed one compound to you. Okay, and Christine in the back. So you focused on the flavor of the tomatoes. Is there a relationship between flavor and nutrition value? So are we also getting more a more nutritious product? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Also, just the, the happily, our this uh, heat treatment, same times, 
increase the liquid PIM and the carotenoid content. This one is the major nutritional value for tomatoes. Why? It's because if you use heat treatment, basically you uh, upregulate the uh, cetric terpene pathway. Terpene pathway, this then usually come to volatile. Also, you have the carotenoid pathway. It's the uh, share the same pathway in early, earlier stage. Therefore, this heat treatment same times improve the, the nutritional quality. But uh, another treatment, uh, I just don't know, we did not measure that. Um, are all tomatoes, commercially grown tomatoes now pick green, or is there some place in the world where we can, uh, we can go and actually find a, a, a commercial tomato that's actually been allowed to uh, ripen a bit more. I guess I'm asking, is there any place in the world that actually has a tasty tomato these days? Uh, and uh, let's see this way. It's, there must be somewhere. It's uh, like, uh, I think my grandpa ate better tomato than me. It's, uh, it's uh, kind of a less developed area and had better tomatoes because they are just, uh, they're not transported so far they, from their backyard or from the local market. They got, uh, for us, uh, every, everything is uh, one small, the, from a producer to uh, the end consumer is too far. It's uh, the, the everything from, from there, I think. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Jin. Um, that was terrific. I think that we're all ready to go out and try to find uh, a, a tomato that we can all just appreciate. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is the final news briefing from the 250th American Chemical Society uh, National Be Meeting and Exposition in Boston. Uh, please join us um, in San Diego. Um, for uh, an archived version of this session, uh, which will soon be posted, please go to bit.ly slash ACS Live Boston. Thank you. <laughs>